Thank you. Let's go now in the book of Revelation 5, 6. Come on. The Bible says, Then I saw a lamb, John speaking, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by four living creatures and the elders. The Lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Hallelujah! This is uh, the revelation that uh, John was receiving for the end of everything. Mm. He was uh, at the island of Patmos mm. receiving the revelation. It described what uh, he was uh, seeing and uh, in that revelation, in that vision, he saw Jesus as a lamb. And that lamb was at the center. He was at the throne. He was sitting on the throne and surrounded by the, by the, 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 the seven, uh, what can I say? He was uh, surrounded by uh, creatures and uh, elders. That's very strange. That's very wonderful. And uh, in uh, that uh, revelation, God wants to teach us. God wants to give us the picture of heaven where we see Jesus at the center of heaven everything. Jesus sitting there at the throne in the middle, at the center of everything. And everyone who surrounding Jesus is attracting by him. Everyone who is surrounding Jesus is focusing on him. And today I want to tell somebody Jesus has to be at the center of your life. Amen. Say amen. amen. Jesus has to be at the center of your ministry. Jesus has to be at the center of our church. Amen. amen. Jesus being at the center, something has to be happen. We have to focus to Jesus. This is the season. This is the time where we have to take that decision and to say, Jesus at the center of my life. Remove everything that is hanging you. Remove all the things that are attracting you and that, that are pulling you far from Jesus. Remember that we are in this time of pandemic. It's been a year that the pandemic is in the country and we see that the people are in panic. People are doing all that they can to fight that the pandemic. But I want to tell you this, with Jesus in the middle, with Jesus at the center, victory is possible. Amen. And my question to you this morning, yes, we speak about Jesus at the center. We tell you that remove everything else and remain with Jesus. Jesus in your mind, Jesus in your thoughts, Jesus in your mouth, Jesus in your action, Jesus in everything that you do. And what does it mean? When we speak about Jesus at the center, we say 
that Jesus should be the number one of everything that you do. Jesus has to be above everything. Jesus is the preeminence in everything. He surpassing all others. When you do something, you have to refer to Jesus. When you pray, your focus is on Jesus rather than the things that are bothering you. Yes, beloved, this is the time where we, we, we went through because victory is already there. Yes. We went through that uh, moment of shaking, but uh, I like the attitude of the leadership when they evicted us, but our first, our first word that came out, we said, Jesus is in control, meaning that Jesus is at the center. When Jesus is in control, don't worry, because he knows what he has to do. I remember even uh, at uh, that feast of uh, Cana, of, at the wedding, they went there and uh, they served the, the wine. Uh, people were rejoicing, but uh, Mary has that uh, revelation. Mary put uh, Jesus at the center of that feast. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, no problem. Go and uh, tell something to Jesus. Tell him that uh, there is no more wine. And when they approached Jesus, Jesus said, what is it between me and you? But I like the attitude of Mary. She said, do whatever he said to you to do. Yes. Hallelujah. This is to put Jesus at the center. This is the season. Beloved, I want to tell you this. In our new venue, Jesus first. When we pray, Jesus first. First, when we worship Jesus first, yeah. when we reach out Jesus first, yeah. I want somebody to say Jesus first. Jesus first. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I remember in Mark 17 1 to 8, Jesus used to pray with his disciples, mm. and one day. He went to the mountain as usual. He took James, Peter, and John, let go and pray. While praying, something strange happened. And in that moment, Jesus transfigured and the glory of God surrounded him. And at the same time, uh, Moses and Noah appeared. It was a very good moment. And the disciples were there. The three disciples at the mountain said, Wow, what a wonderful time. Jesus, we never see you in that situation where you transfigured. Oh, I see that this is the time for us to put three tents. One for you, one for, uh, for, for Noah, and one for... Uh, uh, Elijah, no, but yes, it was good. They forget about themselves. It was a good experience, but I want to tell you this. above that, Jesus has to be the first. Jesus has to be the center. I, I know that uh, you are, this is the time people are struggling with their, they, 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 they are, what can I say, uh, what they are doing, businesses, maybe now you see a breakthrough, now you see 
things are moving well. I want to tell you this, even if things are moving well, don't forget and say, oh, I am comfortable in this situation. Let me continue to make money. Let me continue to do my business. Yes, it's good, but I want to tell you this, Jesus at the center. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus at the center. It's what we have to desire. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus at the center. It's all about him. And him only. Beloved, remember that in our vision, we have the five F's. We follow Jesus. First, we follow him in his word. When we pray, we follow him. Not when you pray, you look at your situation. It's like you are not comfortable. No. Tell yourself that. Jesus is in control. Amen. Him first. Even if they can come and evict me, that is not a problem. But what I know, my Redeemer lives. Amen. I want us now to go through four points. When Jesus is at the center of your life, at the center of everything that you do. Number one, when Jesus is at the center, you have to follow his purpose. As I said, it's not about you. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> Let me come back to the great miracle that we, we, we are living, we still in that miracle. We, 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 we still rejoicing about that miracle. Mm -hmm. Yes, they evicted us. Mm -hmm. But it was not about us. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that uh, being in this flesh we complained. It been 15 years, God, we are here. 15 years. Can you, can you listen to that, God? Do you know what it means to be in a place for 15 years without quarreling, without any problem, but suddenly you are evicted? God, what do you want to teach us? <laughs> but God said, follow me. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. That's why we said, Jesus is in control. It means Jesus Amen. at the center. Amen. They evicted us. No service. But we said, okay, Jesus, not us, but you. Let us follow your purpose start to follow Jesus. Not only, not even a week, Jesus activated Amen. something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you clap the hand for Jesus? He activated. If we tell you when we negotiated the contract, Jesus is Jesus on. sitting on the throne. Come on. <laughs> Beloved, I want to tell you this. This is the season. Let us come together and put Jesus at the center. Let him do whatever he wants to do for his purpose. Let us follow him. I know he never abandons us. He never forsaken us. We saw it. We see it. And we will see it. Mm. Mm. Follow his 
peppers. God knew that Jesus had to die for the humanity to be redeemed. For the humanity to be saved. But in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus being fully God, being fully human being, he was praying with his disciple. But uh, something came in him. He saw the suffering that he was going through. And he said, Oh God, God, if you are willing, take this cup from me, away from me. No, Jesus, no God. It's too much. But he said, yet I oh, uh, yet not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Amen. God knew because he came the last. In that situation, I know you too, you are going through a certain situation. You don't know what is going on in your life. You've been a victim. You don't know in the situation of pandemic how to pay your rent, how to pay the school fees of your, your kids, how to do your business. Everything has been collapsed. But I want to tell you this. Tell God, not my will, but you will be done. That means you only at the center of what is happening. And Jesus being at the center of what is happening, I tell you that he will make a way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthen him. Hallelujah. When Jesus is at the center, always the rescue from heaven will be with you. Amen. God will never forsake you or abandon you. Number two, trust his process. Amen. Jesus at the center Trust his process. I know somebody who trusted the process of God. That guy is Job. He lost everything in a short period. And above all, the wife came and said, Curse God and you die. Not let us die. You die because I have that chance to get married again. Mm. But you die. Curse. But in that situation, God never abandoned. He said, no, God is at the center of my life. Everything that is happening to me, God knows. I put him at the center and he said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on earth. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Trust the process of God. I know that you, you, you fail, but it's not the end. Trust the process of God. Even if as we are in this pandemic, Oh, today, they are speaking now about the possible third wave. But I want to tell you this. Trust the process. Jesus is at the center. Jesus is in control. You will never die with Corona. Hallelujah. Trust the process. You don't know how to pay your rental. You got to ask left and right. Everyone is telling you, don't you know the situation that you are going through? Everyone is victim of that. 
But trust him. Trust the process. He is your redeemer. He will stand at the last. That's why his name is Omega. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. His name is Omega. Trust him. He will do something for, for you. Number three. Commit to his plan. When Jesus is at the center of your life, is at the center of our church, is at the center of everything, let us commit to his plan. He has a good plan for you, not to harm you. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways, my ways. Hallelujah. Amen. He has a good plan for you. Commit to what God is leading you to go. Go. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, let me come again because this is the time where we have to rejoice and to testify what God is doing in every nation. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, we didn't panic. Oh, yes. We were just praying. Commit to the ways of God. We had many thoughts. This and that. People could come out. No, Pastor, you see, the way this happened, it's because, no. Leave <laughs> Jesus at the center. Amen. You be still and know that Jesus is at the center. Be still and know that Jesus is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Commit to his plan. Don't go with your plan to God. Start to explain. Just give yourself to him. Amen. Give yourself to him. Remove everything that you, are, you have in your thoughts. Everything that you plan, no, remove. But leave him to do something. And I tell you, if you leave him to do something, he will make a way. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four. Jesus in the center. You have to please your God. Mm. Be in sanctification. Do what pleases to your God. Not to your pastor. Not to your neighbor. Not to people who are in street. So that they can say, hey, you see, that one, wow. But I want to tell you this. If God say, hey, that one is my son. And he blessed me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In uh, Matthew 12, 18, the Bible says, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, your God, in what you are doing, by giving your touch, mm. by serving him, by praying for people, by working for the kingdom of God to move forward. Do whatever you can to please your God than to please men. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In my conclusion, for you, what does it mean to live a Christ-centered life? 
Because today, my preaching, I say to you, follow his purpose, number one. Trust his process, number two. Commit to his plan, number three. And uh, please to him, number four. But in conclusion, to live a Christ-centered life is to focus exclusively upon a commitment to Jesus. Now, I want to challenge you. Here's from next week. We are going to take possession of our new venue. I want you to be fully committed to the work of God. I want you to be fully committed to Jesus. This is the time where we have to put Jesus at the center of every nation, Black Fountain. I want now to send a shout. Leaders, wake up. This is the time for us to be fully committed. Hosting team, this is the time for us to be fully committed. Oh, our men, we are waiting for you to be fully committed. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, 2021, we're still in March. What I ask you, please, this is the time for you to go inside your life. Examine yourself. Ask you the question, is Jesus at the center of your life? Is Jesus at the center of your family? For us pastors, for us leaders, every nation from for them, is Jesus at the center of our church. I want to encourage you. Beloved, follow Jesus. Follow his process. Trust his process. Commit to his plan. And please to Jesus. And you will see him fully. To be. To take control of your life. Good. May Jesus bless you in the mighty name of Jesus.